angel. You know, children's hearts are more sensitive to love. Nothing you can be more sure of than whether someone truly cares for you. Something that we adults often have to spend a lot of effort and time to determine. However, this sensitivity can also get in the way of your children at times. Not every school had all the great things you will love from the start, like what Toto Chan felt at the Tomoe train school. Yet, I think a child will feel interested according to your own preferences and observations. No one will totally the same. As long as you have the will to find joy in the places where you are. The school in a train is what Toto Chan loves. I hope that my angel will eventually find what you love at the school you go to. Let us meet Toto Chan again through today's two chapters The Classroom in a Train and Lesson at Tomoe. No one have arrived yet when Toto Chan got to the door of the railroad car the headmaster had told her would be her classroom. It was an old fashioned car, one that still had a door handle on the outside. You took hold of the handle with both hands and slide the door to the right. Tutu Chan Hars was beating fast with excitement as she piped inside. Wow! Study here could be like going on an endless journey. The windows still had baggage racks above them. The only difference was that there was a blackboard at the front of the car and the white lengthwise seats had been replaced by school decks and chairs all facing forward. The hand straps had gone too, but everything else had been left just as it was. Toto Chan went in and sat down at someone's desk. The wooden chairs resembled those at the other school, but they were so much more comfortable that she could sit on them all day. Toto Chan was so happy and liked the school so much that she decided to come every day and never take any holidays. Toto Chan looked out of the window. She knew the train was stationary, but was it because the flowers and the trees in the school grounds were swaying slightly in the breeze? It seemed to be moving. I'm so happy! She finally said out loud. Then she pressed her face against the window and made up a song just as she always did whenever she was happy. I'm so happy, so happy am I. When I'm happy, it because... Just at that moment, someone got on. It was a girl. She took her notebook and pencil box from her school bag and put them on the desk. Then she stood on tiptoe and put the bag on a rack. She put her shoe back up there too. Toto Chan stopped singing and quickly did the same. After that, a boy got on too. He stood at the door and threw his back on the back and wrecked as if he was playing basketball. It bounced up and fell on the floor. Ah, bad shot, said the boy, aiming again from the same place. This time, it stayed on. Yo! Nice shot, he shouted, following by, oh no, bad shot, as he scrambled onto the deck and opened his back to get out his notebook and pencil box. His fellow to do this first evidently made it count as a miss. Eventually, there were nine pupils in a car that comprised the first grade at the Tomoe Gaguen. They could all be traveling together on the same train. Going to a school with a railroad car seemed unusual enough, but the seating arrangements turned out to be distinctive too. 
at the other school, each pupil was assigned a specific desk. But here, we were allowed to sit anywhere we liked at any time. After much thought and a good look around, Tutu Chan decided to sit next to the girl who had come after her at that morning because the girl was wearing a pinafore with a so cute long ear rabbit on it. But the most unusual thing of all about this school, however, was the lessons themselves. School typically schedule one subject, for example, Japanese, the first period, when you just do the Japanese, then say arithmetic, the second period, when you just do arithmetic. But here, it was quite different. At the beginning of the first period, the teacher made a list of all the problems and questions in the subjects to be studied at that day all at once then she could say now start with any of these you like so whether you started on Japanese or arithmetic or something else didn't matter at all someone who liked composition might be reading something while behind you someone who wanted physics might be boiling something in a flask over an alcohol burner so that a small explosion would liable to occur in any of the classrooms. This method of teaching enabled the teachers to observe as the children progressed to higher grades what they were interested in as well as their way of thinking and their character. It was an ideal way for teachers to really get to know their pupils. As for the pupils, they loved being able to start with their favorite subjects and the fact that they had all day to cope with the ones they disliked meant they could usually manage them somehow. So, the study was primarily independent, with pupils free to go and consult the teacher whenever necessary. The teacher could come to them too, if they wanted, and explain any problem until it was thoroughly understood. Then pupils could be given further exercises to work on along. It was the study in the truest sense of the word. And it meant there were no pupils just sitting an inattentively while the teacher talked and explained. The first grade pupils hadn't quite reached the stage of independent study, but even they were allowed to start with any subject they wanted. Some copy letters from the alphabet, some drew pictures, some read books, and some even did calisthenics. The girl next to Toto Chan already knew all her alphabet and was writing it in her notebook. It was all unfamiliar that Toto Chan was a bit nervous and unsure of what to do. Just then, the boy sitting behind her got up and walked toward the blackboard with his notebook, apparently to consult the teacher. She sat at the desk beside the blackboard and was explaining something to another pupil. Toto Chan stopped looking around the room and, with her chin cupped in her hands, fixed her eyes on his back as he walked. The boy dragged his leg and his whole body swayed dreadfully. Toto Chan wondered at first if he was doing it on purpose. But she soon realized the boy couldn't have it. Toto Chan went on watching him as the boy came back to his desk. Their eyes met. The boy smiled. Toto Chan hurriedly smiled back. When he sat down at the desk behind her, it took him longer than other children to sit down. She turned around and asked, Why did you walk like that? He replied quietly with a tender voice that sounded intelligent. I had polio. Polio? 
Tutu Chan repeated. Never having heard the word before. Yes, earlier, he whispered. It's not only my leg, but my hand too. He held it out. Tutu Chan looked at his left hand. His long fingers were bent and looked as if they were stuck together. Can't they do anything about it? She asked, concerned. He didn't reply, and Tutu Chan became embarrassed, wishing she hadn't asked. But the boy said brightly, "My name's Yasuaki Yamamoto. What's yours?" She was so glad to hear him speak in such a cheerful voice that she replied loudly, "I'm Tutu Chan." That's how Yasuaki Yamamoto and Tutu Chan became friends. The sun made it pretty hot inside the train. Someone opened a window. The fresh spring breeze blew through the car and tossed the children' hair about with carefree abandon. In this way, Tutu Chan's first day at Tomoe began. Today's story time is over. My angel may have emotions and questions. If you have any questions, just ask. We learn more things from the questions. But save them to tomorrow morning. Now I wish my little love a good night. See you at tomorrow's story time.